It's time for another review of the Mercedes X-Class, the first pickup by Mercedes, because this one here now comes with a new V6 engine, a true Daimler engine. How will this change the vehicle? Of course, also the general exterior, interior, and then the driving performance information for you here on Autocrew, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. All of the nature experience and the driving fun on the road in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front, the Mercedes X-Class is definitely the design pickup with the big Mercedes star, two horizontal fins here. Then this one here is the so-called power variant with chrome accentuations. It starts with so-called pure, then you have more black plastic in the lower part. Progressive, you have vehicle color and then with power you have the chrome finish, the power the most expensive version as well. If you want to know more about all the different versions, check out the initial review where I showed you all three versions. Here today it's more about the V6, but of course I'll give you another full tour here of this one. And entry prices are, you know, about 35,000 euros for example in Germany and goes up over 50,000 if you pick this new V6 engine here and some more of the equipment. And this one here of course offers a little bit more than its platform brothers, the Nissan Navara and the Renault Alaskan. So, and directly at the beginning, what's under the hood? Wow, it's a really heavy hood, I can tell you. And without the hydraulic struts and just this small pin here and it's very low right it's like and just in the one hmm doesn't look too stable here i'm not sure if i would like to work here somewhere like this hmm strange but let's talk about that engine the version is now called x350d but it doesn't have 3.5 liter of displacement and it has not 350 horsepower so it doesn't have anything to do with that number exactly but it is a 3 liter V6 with 258 horsepower, unlike the 2.3 liter diesel that was used before the four cylinder engines. And you also have a four cylinder petrol engine in some markets. But here, the big diesel and with a good acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour with 7.5 seconds. That's even a little bit faster than it was expected earlier. So pretty good performance, especially then for the road if you have some transition episodes. And of course, a little bit more torque than also for off-road riding. I'm really looking forward how this one plays out when driving the car. Five meters 34 or 17 foot five, the total length of the Mercedes X-Class. And you can also get it with those side steps. Mm, I mean, on the one hand, they're recommended for off-road driving because you can for example, as a co-driver, step outside the car and here and check out ah, what's with the obstacle. On the other hand, it reduces the ground clearance and also the side clearance. So I'm not really sure if I would pick them for off-road driving. Um, they maybe can look cool, but I'm not sure if they are that practical. Roof rates, of course, we have here as well. Rims start with 17 inch. Those ones here optional. 18, yeah, painted in mud now already and 19 would be the maximum choice but i think this one is something good in between here now with the v6 diesel we also have the v6 turbo sign here with a big badge at the side this color here is by the way called rock gray and continue further on to the rear it has this classic pickup styling especially in the side profile you can see something of the nissan navara of course in the front and the rear and also in the interior they can play more the mercedes card Towards the rear, I can also mention that the towing capacity is about three and a half tons. And what you can put on the loading area is 1.1 ton. Now, <laughs> got some more figures for you guys, because we're also you know, close to the water here. Uh, the ground clearance here is with a normal suspension, 20 centimeters. And when you have the off-road suspension, which you get for a standard in the off-road markets, for example, South America, it's 22 centimeters. Also, when you're going really deep in the water, 60 centimeters is the wading depth. So you can go to the water without sucking any water into the engine. Over that, 
shouldn't do that. And if we continue over to the rear, it gets a little bit wet here now, but since we have this power bar here, I have no problem to step onto the loading area and continue with our workout review. I'm sailing in deep waters. I'm the captain of this ship. <laughs> it's like a team a little bit, you know, like standing here and then. I think we should continue with the review. Okay, let's continue. So in the rear, you not only see the Mercedes star, but also those rectangular taillights, which have a quite modern style. But of course, there's not so much you can do to style a pickup here in the rear completely different. It's always somewhat form follows function. And here is my new favorite feature, because if you open this rear hatch, usually it would just tumble down. But now here as an option, Ah, hydraulic struts to go with a smooth opening to the vast loading area here. I mean, it is a double cap, so it's not the longest loading area. You know, there are also single cap pickups which have a longer loading area where you can fully put a motocross bike here, for example. Here, you have to drive with this one lower down that the rear tire of the motocross bike can fit. The loading area is 1 meters 50 in both directions and you can also fit a euro pallet on there also in, in both ways then. And there are also a lot of things you can you know, use the tension belts like the fixations right here and also in the lower part and you also get different grounds here for the floor. But overall you know that's what you would expect from a pickup. This um, sports bar here I mean it's pretty fancy and also when you do want to do some fa funny stuff and drive like a sailor but um, I think it's more a design element to me I'm not even sure if maybe it's even a little bit hindering when you really want to put some stuff on here but at the moment it's actually quite cozy um, maybe I'll I take a nap now on this very hard plastic surface It's a Nissan key with a Mercedes logo. This is probably one of the details where they could have paid more attention. Also here, this is the um, keyless entry function when you have the ignition closed. So you open and close it right there. But at the moment it's not working because the ignition is on that. You can see all the displays and stuff. Option, you can also get this um, leatherette called Articode Mercedes inlet at the inside of the door. It feels very soft and nice. And this one here is again from the basic platform. We have a lot of room at the inside of the doors, also for bigger bottles, that comes handy. Then this is the main interior and everything you see in the top part is basically a Mercedes and the very lower part is mostly Nissan. But what is completely different are the seats. It starts with basic fabric seats in the pure version, then the progressive version already gets comfort fabric seats and optional then an inside Alcantara. Uh, or microfiber, it's called Dynamica at Mercedes, different company, and outside an article. And this one then is the optional animal skin package for the inside, which you don't have to go for. The power version comes as standard with the microfiber inside and leatherette outside. And this is uh, visually the most attractive solution. Also looks pretty much premium. I've, um, you know, I had some, some extras vehicles with that one too. You can check it up in the other video and um, the, you know, the comfort seat fabric base, which you get as, with the progressive trim level, is actually the one I would go for because uh, fabric stays even a little bit cooler in summer than the microfiber does. You also have a seat heating, two levels right here, and also the power variant here comes with electric seat control, otherwise they would be manual. This one is here also for a small lumbar support. Well, you sit upright, it's also a higher off-road vehicle, sadly, and this is also one of the other bad things. The steering wheel can only be adjusted in height, not in reach. When you're a tall person, you just put it way, way up. You get different deco elements, this one here with the matte aluminum style, by the way, um, fitting to those nice vents. They also click when you close or open them. 
You can also get wood inlets, for example, for the decor elements. Also with the Mercedes steering wheel, with this inlet, that looks, you know, really nice. And of course, this is something different here when you think about the other pickups in the segment. And on the left side, you have some controls, for example, to activate the 360 degree camera. We'll soon show you that. And also another interesting button right there. And this one is this lower button, open and closes the rear window. The interior overview, this is really stylish for a pickup. Also with those Mercedes vents right there and the big decor element. The wood style would also be cool in matte wood, but this one here, of course, the more modern one. Then infotainment, you can get a 5.4 or optional here, the eight inch screen. Then also with this 360 degree view camera, also with a good resolution on the right side. That's pretty nice. The lower part then hard plastic or everything which is lower than they haven't paid too much attention to. Also with the classic climate unit, this one feels all, let's say, okay, but nothing more. In the lower part, you will then control for the off-road modes, for the, um, uh, you know, but also for the gear reduction, hill descent control, the center differential lock, and also a light for, for, the, for the rear um, loading area. And then, you know, this shifting lever for the automatic transmission, R, N, and D. And further down lower, this Mercedes control unit, um, where you can control the infosame system in a classic way. Also some driving modes, which we'll test out when we drive the car later. There's also an off-road mode available, so you can just let the car do everything. And then a shallow cup holder, something like this. And some leatherette cover here for this armrest. Oh, they've fixed it a little bit. Now in the first few vehicles we had, it was more loose, so they improved a little bit of the quality. And then you can put your smartphone right here and also recharge it. There are two USB slots in there. When we look at the infotainment system, uh, with a classic Mercedes view, you can connect your phone via Bluetooth. Apple CarPlay was supposed to be available, but still not available in this vehicle. I will um, answer you in the comments if you're interested, because I'll check with them again after our shooting. Then a GPS looks like this. We also know that standing from Mercedes, it's actually good to drive. Um, had no complaints with uh, this here so far. Well, sometimes I think the root commands come a little bit late. Um, I generally have that with my say software. I'm not sure if it's just me, but um, sometimes I miss then, uh, you know, something also at the motorway. Do you have that as well with this software? Then tell me. And um, of course, we can also go back to this main menu, radio function, and from the vehicle. They can, for example, again, access the rear camera, also consumption figures and stuff. Uh, of course, this one also a rather fancy system for a pickup. So this sun visor, when it's like this, I can't see anything anymore. Um, yeah, not that useful for a tall driver. That way I could see again. But here is also a very big mirror, also with a light integrated. That's good to check out. Stop you. And next to it, the normal back mirror. Also shows the direction we're going cause, you know, some adventure spirit in build. So instruments, left side is um, speed, right side <laughs> RPM, <laughs> rolling a little bit. In the middle part, you have a digital screen then, for example, for the digital speed or also for some short GPS infos. So what about the rear? Well, you can see you don't have too much room in here. It's still a double cap pickup and can use it with four people. Um, actually, it's even possible to use it with five. So the middle seat is also loud. And as it's a high car, the middle tunnel is also not that voluminous here on the top part. You can see it's rather low, also with a 12 volt power supply. Well, and when you sit here, uh, you can see that I sit really high. Um, so in the front with one meters 86 or six foot one, I had like this headroom in the front seat. But here, I have exactly no headroom, but it does fit still. But I'm sitting like on the child seat here in the rear. Yeah, now someone again posts a time code, like you know, minute 3309 or something where we are at the moment. Thomas in the rear seat. Thank you so much. <laughs>
And you can see the knees are hitting the front seat. So, um, well, I mean, for a shorter route, it would be okay. Uh, but it's nothing for tall adults here in the rear. If you're a little bit short, it will be okay. And also the outside seats have Isofix to install child seats on. Sorry, Thomas. <laughs> this was not my intention. So that's what's, what happens when Michelle leans over to the co-driver's side and then puts his elbow on the, uh, on the window lever. That's how our driving part starts then for the day. With Thomas's driving lounge and Michelle joining us in the house, yeah. <laughs> so with the V6. And you probably, I hope you've seen the review of the X-Stars before with those four cylinder engines. And so we can also compare it here today. And of course, the one thing you feel immediately is that you have a more sovereign acceleration. You don't need to push the engine that much. You can keep it at low RPMs and already reach the higher, you know, the, the, the higher speed. And that's of course something that's also relaxing in the drive. But at the same time, you also have power reserves. This one here, then, um, 7.5 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour and especially for a pickup that's really impressive. We'll also keep you updated with the um, with the consumption figures for example. Let's see how we score then here with the V6 also in comparison to the four cylinder engines. Um, that's a tough question by the way what, what we scored with the four cylinder engine. I think yeah, I, I did note it down before I think somewhere yeah i have to check that up <laughs> so now we can go a little bit faster good mood here today with us i hope you you're glad you joined us here as well so in general the mercedes x class um you know one of my um one of my major points was it is of course fancy and lifestyle ish from the outside but don't be mistaken, from the inside, it's really rather a, a working animal and not this lifestyle SUV as you would expect. Mm, you feel that it also has this base off-road character because the steering is, well, on the other hand, light. On the one hand, you have to steer quite a lot. So a pure city SUV would have a more progressive steering. And here, just you know, watch the, 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 the action camera shot. Oh, police, yeah. We're not doing anything wrong here. Not yet. <laughs> so, when we're going to the next corner, 90 degrees, then take a look at, you know, when a 90 degree corner approaches, how far do I have to turn the steering wheel to get that corner? And usually, with a more progressive steering with an SUV, I wouldn't have to turn the steering wheel that much. And see here, almost turn it twice around. So we have to steer a lot. But at the same time, when you're going off-road, and you should check out the off-road review we have of the X-Class, then you need that softer steering because when you get some feedback from the ground than off-road, it's actually better when it's not, you know, that harshly reacting and you're not, you know, getting steered all over the place. So this one here, still you feel the off-road background of this vehicle. And it was really off-road capable. You should check that out again in the review. And with the V6 here, of course, off-road a little bit more power. But then again, off-road, you rather need that steady acceleration and not the you know, most raw power. Uh, you just need it also from standstill, for example. And that was also very well working than with the smaller engines. This one, of course, if you just have more money available to spend for the bigger engine. But indeed, it makes the car, very nice river view here, it makes the car calmer to drive because you can keep it at lower RPMs. And one of my criticism points with the Fossil in the engine was that you really felt this diesel na nailing or heard this diesel nailing sound, which was not that well fitting to uh, of a high-class Mercedes. Yes, it's the commercial vehicle segment, 
but still people expect a certain level of quality and refinement when buying a Mercedes. And since this one here is the Nissan platform, we do find some things which, you know, do not really comply with that. Other that do again, you feel a difference to the Nissan Navara or the Renault Alaskan because we have the wider rear axle here in this X-Class that is giving us a little bit more stance on the road. Also calms the ride a little bit. The seats are different, therefore I can see a little bit better to the front than in the other cars. Still, it remains the problem that when I use the... Whoa! I have to say, <laughs> when I use the sunshade, it's like blind. Totally blindfolded. That's again, this car here is not adapted to the tallest people. But as, as long as I don't use the sunshade here, I can still see very well to the front, that's no problem. And this is something you have in common with, a, with an SUV. You have this upright seating position that's really nice and also comfortable on the longer term run. I really like this V6 deal. Um, I can already tell you that now it feels so much more refined than the four cylinder and therefore also more silent and gives you just you know strength and sovereignty at the same time. So more strength to be calmer. You know that's maybe sounds uh, a little bit contradicting but uh, actually it's true. So here we get in the roundabout. That's something that is then you know a little bit annoying that you have to steer that much when you you know have a lot of road use. And again if you have more off-road use you'll be just fine with that. Mm. Here also you can see not so much is happening when I'm steering it in this case. Um, here the first few degrees they are actually a little bit numb so um, this could be maybe a little bit more responsive on the road and of course also an off-road suspension which is by the way a little bit lower from standard for the European markets. And for example, for South America, you get the off-road suspension as standard. That gives you a little bit more, uh, you know, riding height, ground clearance, and it's a little bit more durable. That depends on, you know, on the purpose. If you want that one in Europe, you can also get it. It's just that the, the standard suspension setup is a different one. So here again, some shaking tests. You see that we can shake this car up a little bit. Shake, shake, shake. And that's again, you know, proof this off-road suspension, but also makes the ride quite cool. And um, I also feel that from the uh, you know, you know, initial stages, they've tuned the suspension a little bit to be also a little bit more comfortable on the road use. So it is somehow fun to drive this car. It has more character than some of, you know, um, you know other off-roadish vehicles with a pickup. It's you always have some coolness factor, especially in markets where they're not super common. You know, when you look, look at North America, where this vehicle is too small for all, actually, at least in most cases, maybe that will also change in the future. Mm, but then, you know, when so, so many pickups are being used, that's nothing so special. But then again, in other, other countries where there are hardly any pickups, then it has also this very unique factor. Now at about 80 km an hour, the bigger diesel can score again with the lower RPM figures. We had 80 km an hour, we're just above 1000 RPM. That's of course then the, uh, this calmness from the bigger diesel engine. That's, that's pretty cool. So I just come to a stop right there. Also in this hole, a little bit rough. Because I want to accelerate and show you, you know, the, the, really the, like the pure power of that engine. We also have a driving mode selector, I'll put it to sport that we get the maximum performance. We let the gas pass like that and then we accelerate now. That's 100. I mean, for a picker that was really quick. We were a little bit, you know, off-road at, at first there and we can try it again here at the bus stop because, I mean, I didn't pinch it all the way through, I think. Just, you know, a little thing was missing. Let this truck pass and we'll go again once more. So once more, uh, we let this Nissan Navarro pass. Is it Navarro or Petrol? 
That's fine. So let's go. Yep, that's one hundred. That was a red lane camera, by the way. Nothing from the car. <laughs> so pretty good acceleration here from the wow, and. Well, it also feels kind of sporty because the all-wheel drive, permanent all-wheel drive setup here is 40% in the front and 60% in the rear. And that also accounts for this rather sporty mode. So, um, to drive, it's surely among the sportier, maybe well-prepared pickups. Mm, yes, it is indeed a little bit better to drive than the Nissan Navara or the Renault Alaskan. And depending on the version, if you go with the high, high, high-end version, this one of course is more expensive. Um, if you then pick, for example, mid-trim versions, there also the Mercedes is not really much more expensive. You know, the pickup that is probably in the biggest competition with this one is the Volkswagen Amarok, which is a really very good one and also pretty sovereign diesel-wise with the um, V6 diesel they have there. And if you ask me, Mm, the Amarok also feels a mm, little bit higher, more off-roadish, also in, in, in the front cabin, a little bit stronger to me. So um, I think also for road run, I would still prefer the Amarok. It's also a little bit easier to steer. The overall car that in driving also makes mm, you know a little bit more refined impression. But they both surely come close. And I think if I would be in the market to think about you know. I have a lot of money, I can really pick a premium pickup. I would probably end up and decide between the Amarok and, uh, and this one here. The other one, which is uh, you know definitely cheaper and therefore also very successful in Europe and also in Germany, is the Ford Ranger. You often see that at, uh, at construction sites because they offer very good price performance ratio. That's just you know for, for a comparison. So, power from the V6, yes definitely there. Then again the calmness in driving when you keep it at lower RPMs. We can also go back to the, uh, we can take the eco mode for example, then we can save some fuel. The throttle input then is reduced, so the opposite of the sports mode. And um, so you can see if you can save some fuel by that. Um, so we can, by the way, you know, just, just leave it in the, um, in, in this all-wheel drive mode all the time. Um, in this case here, because we always have the permanent all-wheel drive, there's no function you know, to, to either go with two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So you also stay with all-wheel drive on the road. Of course, off-road you can um, also then pick the uh, uh, different differentials. You have a center differential lock, rear differential lock, and um, also in, uh, a four low gear, so off-road gear reduction. Explained a lot of those then again in the off-road episode, you should check that one out. So yes, with the official Daimler engine, this car has become more of a Mercedes. So a lot of people were looking forward for this power here. But I think oh, really not only for the power, but also for the serenity and for the calmness it brings. Also when we're driving here you now, rather than you know, cruising speed, it somehow fits then that it's rather silent. Also compare it to, to other pickups in the segment and um, you don't feel that, that diesel nailing sound. That is you know, also one of the things that I noticed first and when I drive it longer and longer, surely a very interesting thing. And by the way, I already start to uh, sweat here on those animal skin seats. Again, even if you wouldn't care about what ha what's happening to the animals, you should pick the fabric or at least the Alcantara seat that you just have a better climate comfort, for example. Or maybe the, you know, maybe all leather red seat if you really want something to, to wipe clean, for example. If you maybe in construction business or something, but then again, I'm not sure if, um, if you would then would pick a rather expensive Mercedes X-Class for that. So we now also head out a little bit more to the countryside. As you might have noticed, we're in Slovenia here today, so best greetings to our viewers from there. That's, by the way, not our V60. <laughs> That's a motorcycle in front of us. 
So overall, I think very positive impression here from the V6. Let's see what's more ahead on our route. Yeah, we'll soon get to some very beautiful landscape locations as well. And um, I did reset the, uh, the consumption meter, by the way, just after this big acceleration, because that wouldn't be, you know, something you would typically do in everyday driving life. Um, so I just rather want to find out what you can score as minimum consumption, and then you usually add one to two liters to that figure if you're driving it, you know, in city commuting traffic or something like that. By the way, what I always want to try out is opening that rear window while driving. That's cool. Automatic rear window there. It's not that loud, is it? You hardly hear it, right? I would have expected that it's a little bit louder when driving, you know? Mm. But you hardly hear it. It's open. I mean, now it's open. Now it's closed. There's hardly any difference. A little bit, a little bit. I can also do some Homer Simpson style here. Window open. Window closed. Window open. <laughs> okay, next windows now. But that the side window makes a bigger difference for sure. But this one takes a little bit too long, I think, to open and close for Homer Simpson style. So not that funny anymore. Now a little bit faster in the corner. Get a little, push a little bit outside now the brakes. Good situation to test the car, sudden brake movement. Mm, they could be a little bit fiercer, I would say. So you really need to hammer them that something happens. You should be aware of that. So a little bit more braking power from the first punch. I think that would definitely add to, uh, to the overall safety feeling. So um, after resetting, after our acceleration, we have about seven liters on one kilometers, which is fairly good. And I really would expect that this here, the V6 diesel, since it's a little bit more appropriate for the vehicle, would actually consume less than the four-cylinder engines. It's really hard to compare it because we've been driving it in, in Chile in a higher altitude and also on a completely different road profile where we did consume more with the four-cylinders. Mm. But again, I mean, I think I would even have that here on, on this road. Uh, not always, but quite often we have that, that those downsizing engines consume more in real life than the actual more classic bigger engines do. And even more important, you maybe heard also with the diesel recall at Daimler from the older diesels that not enough AdBlue has been filled in while driving, especially for Vito models, for example. This one here, also the other diesels, they all come with the SCR cleaning. And it is said that they also use the proper amount of AdBlue now and don't save AdBlue, basically. And I mean, with the SCR cleaning, they are considering for diesel relatively clean. <laughs> that was the elbow on the window lever from Michelle again. Sorry. No problem. So now in the tunnel, you can also see how that looks like driving at night with this rather classic Mercedes gauges, also with the infotainment system. Other than that, not too much fancy stuff they're using. Now we're getting off from this A road. See again how far I have to steer. But then again, it adds to this off-road feeling on the road. You can, you know, you can maybe call it call it that way. And I, I really like to drive off-road vehicles because they have somehow more character. Like also when you're driving a, like an old Mitsubishi Pajero, for example, and everything is off-road suspension flying a little bit. You sit high above the road. You don't push it that hard because you know you shouldn't go too fast with those vehicles. And that's always somehow a little bit fun and um, really relaxes you. So again, V6, thumbs up for that. So if you can afford that one, it should be the engine you should go for. Then, of course, it's no replacement for a Mercedes lifestyle SUV. If you just want to go to the ice cream parlor with this one here, probably not the right one. This one here should be used when you really need it for work or putting the motorcycles on there or something which 
really suits the use. Otherwise, you have more comfort and more fun and more agility in a, with a modern SUV. And last but not least, against the other pickups, the Amarok is surely hard to beat overall in this segment. But uh, with all the fancy stuff, design-wise, of course, design-wise, this is here definitely top of the game. Um, improvements, if you compare it to the Nissan platform, and it drives better than this one, yes. Um, but surely the other competitors are, are still there, and best is, of course, to take a test ride, and before doing that, check out the other reviews, because we have also reviewed the Ford Ranger, and the X-Class with some different other models you can check out and also the Volkswagen Amarok on-road and off-road and then you can already get a very good impression of how those vehicles then compare. Well some soft off-roading I can show you here on a gravel road track in the woods again for the hard off-road park part check out yeah the hard off-road park it was as well a park and a part in the park check out the other video. Here, for example, we can um, use the hill descent control if I put it in. Here we go. And I don't have to do anything. It keeps the car just at a very, very low speed. So that's uh, pretty interesting. And no matter what I do, the car keeps steadily going downhill. And I mean, that's really quite comfortable. You can, you know, just relax. If you hit the throttle just a little bit, you can go faster in between. Then again, if you leave the throttle, brakes again. If you put the hill descent control out, you can just do it yourself with the brakes. And of course, also using the shifting pedals here. So if I, for example, go to the first gear, I just use the engine braking power. And that's good for going, you know, steep downwards. Here, I mean, I can set the hill descent control here, but of course, here I can also drive faster, that's no problem. It's just for the showcase here. Well, those gravel roads, this will be what's happening, you know, probably a lot of customers will have with this car, and some will also have the hard off-road areas, which the car, again, is really capable of. Here, I also get a good traction here from the permanent all-wheel drive, and it's really fun to steer the car around, and it's also staying fairly comfortable that's for sure because of the soft off-road suspension it's also um, a little bit more agile than one of those full-size pickups this one here especially for american taste a rather small pickup so you can very well steer this this one here around also the corners and you can see i can go relatively fast here also i'm shifting down just a little bit yeah, there's some, some fun off-roading here, like more a soft, speedy off-roading. Well, that's really cool. The thing is with those off-road parks with harsh obstacles, and you really have to go very slow. And on camera, it sometimes looks super boring because you don't feel the G-forces. You don't see how high and how low stuff is. That's the same, you know, when with any jumping sports, for example. If you look, watch motocross on TV, it looks not that spectacular as you would you know be sitting on the machine yourself and realize how high the stuff is they're actually jumping and the same is um, true for those off-road shots here with the vehicle what looks not that spectacular on camera is sometimes in real life already quite spectacular and this one here is really you know a lot of fun to drive it up and around <laughs> and by the way consumption wise you know i, I just had the minimum cruise control consumption of about seven liters. That's of course unrealistically low. And for you know, Autobahn City, nine would be rather realistic. But then here, if we had some off-road stuff and we were also going uphill a little bit and then we were already at 14 liters on one kilometer. So as soon as this car has to work just a little bit more, consumption will also go up major, majorly. But here now we are we going downhill and this is, of course, again, getting the consumption down because we need to don't, no need to work so much. It doesn't push us too far over the front wheels, by the way. And you can see the long steering wheel, steering wheel way. When I'm accelerating out again, it also comes back to me automatically. See it right here now, and then 
can very well get that in shape without steering all the way back then again. So, pretty fun, short off-road park. And again, check out the big uh, one from the other video then after we have finished now with our conclusion. And now to our conclusion for today. It is somewhat a very fun car for sure because just of the pickup building style, yeah. And it's of course also a design machine. So to me, the most beautiful pickup. Also in the interior, you see a lot of changes they have, you know, if you compare it to a Nissan Navara, for example, or to a Renault Alaskan. Some problems, of course, when you have some lead, like with the key, with the lower dashboard, Mm, with the general riding refinement, which is maybe a little bit better with the Volkswagen Amarok. But here, since they also have used a different rear axle, this one is, yes, it is the better car if you compare it to the, to the Nissan Platform Brothers. Um, still, it's no Mercedes lifestyle SUV, you have to be sure about that. But it is more, you know, something to work with or maybe for certain hobbies you need this, this, um, this lower platform for. For example, with this Enduro guy, I obviously want to go here. <laughs> Where's KTM? Yeah, I mean, I mean about driving. The V6 now that was um, awaited by a lot of people is actually pretty nice to drive. So it gives so much more sovereignty and also better sound. But I mean, diesel sound is not so impressive anyway. But I think, you know, my favorite thing was that you can really drive at about 1000 RPM very calmly. And it also brings down the noise level and also showing you the acceleration. It was pretty impressive for a pickup vehicle, one of the most powerful on the market. Of course, it brings up the price even more, so it's really an expensive pickup. And that's also the main reason why most people will stay with the rather cheaper ones. But this one here will surely also have a market as one of the rare premium pickups. Definitely with the V6, with the original Daimler V6, it's more of a Mercedes than it was before. Thank you so much for tuning in here to Auto Fuel. Hope you liked our episode here from Nature. <laughs> and also give me your comments here in the feedback section. What do you think about the car and also with the new V6? And which one is your favorite pickup? <laughs>